preparing for instructional rounds. We would like to thank you for partnering with Wayne Risa and the Wayne County Literacy Learning Network on this pilot of instructional rounds. We appreciate the fact that you are willing to partner with us in this learning experience. As we begin, it's important to ask ourselves, what is instructional rounds? In order to best understand what instructional rounds is, it's important to first understand what it is not. Instructional rounds is not a single program or event. It is also not to monitor implementation of a curriculum or a program. Finally, and most importantly, it is not an evaluation. Our motto is that no teacher shall be harmed during this process. This is not about judging teachers or their practice. So what is Instructional Rounds? Well, it is designed to support an existing improvement strategy at the school or system level. It should also be woven into existing improvement practices. All of the buildings with which we are partnering have already decided to focus on literacy improvement during this school year. Instructional Rounds is also focused on collective learning. One of our main goals is to increase collective efficacy within the schools we are visiting. It is also focused on the patterns of practice. Participants learn to objectively describe what they are seeing for the purpose of improving teaching and learning. It's also an active community of practice where professionals expect to push each other and learn from each other. This is not about fixing teachers, but rather challenging ourselves within the network to, to become better, to learn more, and to improve our practice. Instructional Rounds is a comprehensive school improvement strategy. The schools that we are about to visit have all defined a problem of practice. This problem is rooted in literacy essentials and has been chosen by the staff as an area to focus upon. All of our observations should be focused around this problem of practice. As we observe the practice of the school and the practitioners therein, we're going to want to take copious notes, keeping track of all that we can within a classroom environment. In order to do this effectively, we must consider the ladder of inference. We must do this because human nature is to jump to the top or to draw conclusions without first taking the time to really observe describe, analyze, and think about our assumptions. So rather than jump to the top of the ladder of inference, we are going to be strategic and intentional about first observing, gathering the data, and then describing what we see. Finally, we will analyze, try to make meaning of the collective evidence. We must also be sure to recognize the pieces that we add based on our own assumptions and the lenses that we bring to this work. As we observe, we will want to focus on the instructional core. The instructional core is made of the student, teacher, and content. And all of this resolves around whatever task is being put before our students. When you are observing, it is helpful to focus on what the students are doing, what they are saying, what they are making, and what they are writing. It's also important to describe what the teacher says and does. Remember, we are not judging or evaluating. We are simply recording what actually happens. We should also describe the content and the task that we see. One guiding question may be, what would students know or be able to do if they did exactly what was asked of them in this specific classroom? Focusing on this can help us understand exactly what the task is that the students are being asked to do and what the results of that task would be. As we observe, we will want to write down as much as we can and keep those notes judgment-free. After taking the notes, we will want to give time for personal reflection. After all, the ultimate question 
is what is the next level of work? And this can only be done if we determine through personal reflection. By asking ourselves what should happen next, that is the goal of the network, to focus on what we saw and then to work together to determine what possible steps might come next in order to help the school get to that next level of work. Remember, the instructional core is critical in this process. If we want to increase student learning, the changes must be made to the instructional core. And there are only a few ways to do that. We must either improve the level of content, increase the teacher's knowledge and skills, or improve student engagement. Another key principle to keep in mind is that changing one element of the instructional core will necessitate changing the other two. They are all connected. If you can't see it in the instructional core, it's not there. It doesn't matter if it's in the curriculum guide or if it's on paper somewhere or in the school improvement plan. If you're not observing it in the instructional core, it simply is not there. We also want to keep in mind that task predicts performance. What are the students really being asked to do? Consider what the task is, and that will help us predict performance. We again would like to thank you for partnering with Wayne County RESA and the Wayne County Literacy Learning Network on this process. We look forward to learning with you.